Ann Sheridan and Sterling Hayden star this morning at 10. We interrupt our regularly scheduled programming so that we may bring you this special report from ABC News. ABC News presents another in the series of live reports on Mr. Nixon's trip to Europe. Today, the president in Zagreb. Here in New York is Frank Reynolds. Now for the first... Algren and Randy Wicker. Both of them are homosexuals. Sitting next to them, a gentleman named Lige Clark. He too, he too is a homosexual. And sitting to my left, a gentleman named Jack Nichols, and he fits the same classification. And you may have gotten the clue by now that the program we're going to do this morning deals not only with homosexuality, because we've had programs before which have dealt with homosexuality, but with something known as the gay liberation. Find out what the gay liberation is. Stay with us this morning. <laughs> Good morning. This is the Arnold Zenker Show. This morning, our subject is gay liberation. And now, here's Arnold Zenker. We are living in an age of liberation, or so we understand. Women's liberation, black liberation, uh, housewife liberation, and gay liberation. And are all of you part of gay liberation, whatever gay liberation is? Do you fit? Well, uh, gay liberation has many different meanings. Uh, I tend to think of gay liberation as something which comes from within rather than as a movement uh, itself, although there is a very large growing movement right now throughout the country in all different kinds of cities. Uh, young people, and older people, homosexuals are starting to stand up and talk about their rights and also asking to be asked to be viewed as people rather than as, as uh, uh, grotesque monsters of some sort, which has been the regular view of the homosexual for so many years. What rights are you talking about? Well, for one thing, homosexuals have had a very hard time uh, in the government and employment. Uh, the United States government discriminates against the homosexual. Uh, you can't even uh, have a very small office job in the government uh, if you're known to be a homosexual and the government has agents that it sends out and uh, uh, tries to find out who's homosexual and who isn't. It's a very difficult thing. And the government sort of uh, sets the pattern for the rest of the country. It makes uh, private employment for many homosexuals difficult because if the United States government discriminates, uh, private employers feel free to discriminate also. As a practical matter, have not the laws against homosexuality ceased to be enforced almost all across the country? And is not part of what you're doing trying to whip a paper tiger because it's really not much of a, of a persecution scene at all? Well, it's an enormous persecution scene in the sense of, of, like, job discrimination. Really, about the only place the homosexual has to go is private enterprise. I own my own business. The only reason I can, and these the three, uh, my three friends here, all work for a gay newspaper, so they can afford to sit and, you know, appear as, as themselves, not as homosexuals, but as themselves. But when you uh, work for a large company, it isn't only dismissal. Uh, I know people that work for, like, the uh, AT&T and work there for six or seven years and got a little bit tipsy at a uh, Christmas party or somehow their superiors found out that they were gay, and so they're not given promotions. See, there's both the overt and the covert types of, of prejudice you face, plus the, uh, the constant uh, thing of having to hide your nature, you know, uh, pretending to be heterosexual, as most, heteros as most homosexuals have to do. Uh, the armed services, uh, homosexuality is uh, against the rules, definitely, because they give you an unhonorable un discharge that will follow you the rest of your life. If I were to define homosexuality as abnormal, will you accept that? Statistically, yes. Um, um, in terms of what other people do when they go to bed with somebody else, but uh, in terms of a continuum of sexuality, no. no what no, does no. that mean, a continuum, continuum I, of sexuality? I have a feel, I have a, I look at sexuality as, as something that people just do with somebody else. And uh, just because somebody has uh, um, the same set of plumbing 
uh, as the person he goes to bed with. Uh, I don't see, I don't see that that has an awful lot to do with the fact that it's uh, good and is it not you know, fair to say thing. that throughout nature there is a natural and unnatural and throughout the animal world, indeed, the natural is not homosexuality, but heterosexuality. In, in the animal world, the natural is both, with heterosexuality predominating. And even on the statistical thing, really, you can make an argument that homosexuality is not statistically abnormal. 36 or 37 percent of adult males have one homosexual experience to the point of orgasm between puberty and old age, but another 15 percent of the male population have fantasies and desires, conscious fantasies and desires that they never, uh, that they never work out. So therefore, you could argue that at least for 51, 52 percent of the male population, uh, homosexuality to some small degree is involved in their sex life. So therefore, even statistically, homosexuality could be considered uh, perhaps not abnormal. I don't like difference. the term so abnormal not... because it implies inferior. That's a real objection to abnormal, if you really follow dictionary definition. Abnormal is a word used by psychiatrists, anyway. Ab abnormal is, is, is actually a very, uh, it's the kind of word that you would use uh, if you were describing things in theological terms. Unnatural and natural are, are words which are, have very little meaning when you really look into them uh, as, as words. You have to... to uh, look and see what people do and the fact of the matter is that homosexual behavior is a fact of life it's existed for as long as uh, human societies have existed and uh, you can look back to greek and roman times you can find uh, thousands upon thousands of evidences that homosexual behavior has always been a part of society are all of you content within yourselves being homosexuals mm -hmm. very Yes. Very? Yeah, did. Yes. Yeah. Why very? If it's such a difficult life and if you've been persecuted and oppressed, then why should you be happy within yourself being Well, it isn't a difficult life, and I haven't really been persecuted and oppressed. Then well, what the devil is gay liberation all personally. about? Personally. Personally, I haven't. We, we happen to be very uh, unusual homosexuals in that we're able to express ourselves openly. We work on gay newspaper. Uh, all of us are able to show our faces. The vast majority of homosexuals live in uh, total fear of losing their jobs. They live in fear of their families finding out, of being thrown out of their homes, having the doors of their homes, their families closed to them forever. Uh, I know uh, in Washington, for example, where I used to live, uh, people in the government there are in constant fear of losing their jobs. Uh, it's a very hard thing for many people. For us personally, we don't, we don't seem to feel the, the uh, difficulties that others do. Lige and I live together and uh, have a very comfortable and wonderful life. But we work from within out. We don't worry about what society thinks about us. We're living for uh, our, our own uh, comfort and our own uh, our own integrity. When, when you is more say you live to together us. and you have a comfortable life, are we going to use the word married? Uh, Are you married? We don't like the word married. I'd prefer to say perhaps something like hitched. Uh, we've lived together for six years. Yeah. The, the minister and, of the uh, new gay church suggested that they have a formal wedding. And I don't believe in marriage. Not, not even marriage. heterosexual marriage. Why not? I don't know. I don't think you need marriage to be secure. I think where children are involved, that perhaps marriage uh, is an important thing. In other words, to, to provide some means of care for uh, children. I think that uh, for homosexuals that uh, marriage is not necessarily imp an important thing, although we're in a minority perhaps in feeling this. There are many homosexuals who would like to, to be able to declare their love for each other uh, just as uh, heterosexuals do publicly. And for many of those people, this is a very, very important and meaningful thing. For us personally, we know where we stand. We know we love one another and there's, uh, there's no reason for us to tie this up legally with the state. You say you're all content within yourselves being homosexuals. Was this always the case? It was always the case for me, but, but there's a factor involved there that most people don't realize. You have no choice. I was very fortunate because from the age of 12 or 13, I knew that I was attracted to members of the same sex, that you know, males to me were more exciting and more vibrant, more interesting than females. And I never went through the uh, 
trials and tribulations many homosexuals do of trying to become a heterosexual, of trying to force myself to develop interest in girls, of feeling uh, guilty over these desires. I accepted them as part of, some, as part of my personality, and for some, some reason I managed to avoid an awful lot of misery that a large number of homosexuals do go through. The only guilt I felt as a homosexual is because I didn't feel guilty like society told me I should. How about the families <laughs> in which you were brought up? Oh, uh, How do they accept that? Uh, for a long time, I uh, was pretty scared to uh, let the cat out of the bag. I uh, didn't have quite such an easy uh, time coming out, but uh, it was more because of the situation. I was living in Rochester, New York for a while, which is a pretty gay town, but I was I was really scared. But I was really pretty, uh, you know, pretty nervous about my family finding out. I was rather paranoid about the whole thing. But uh, when I came back, came to New York, I had a new, whole, a whole new set of friends, and it was much easier to move into gay society. Uh, as far as uh, is New York my the capital family, of the gay world? Um, more or less. San Francisco. There are Amsterdam. a lot of capitals. Wherever, Amsterdam, wherever you have a Berlin. large city where people can actually move anonymously without worrying about people uh, knowing what they're doing behind the closed doors of their bedrooms, uh, I think that uh, there you'll find a great no greater number of homosexuals will move. Many homosexuals move out of the small towns where they have to worry about uh, uh, being known as homosexuals and feel more comfortable in large cities. Let me take a break if I can and we'll come back and we'll talk some more. We've got more to come. Peter, I interrupted you. You were telling me about your problems of coming out, as you put it. Well, just with my family, really. How old were you when you decided to come out? Um, I had two comings out. I had a first coming out at 14, a second one at 22. Sounds like a debutante party. <laughs> what do you mean a coming out at 14 and a party well, coming well, out at 22? Well, I had my first, uh, I, was, I began having homosexual sex relations uh, when I was 14, but they were, it was all very furtive and everything, and I was very uptight <laughs> about it. But uh, at 22 was when I moved into the gay world, and, uh, you know, it was very easy at that point. What is the gay world? What is the gay world as opposed to my world? My Other than the fact that, that men prefer men. I, I frankly, uh, although there is what you would call a subculture uh, which moves under the, the cover of, of the, the majority society, uh, I don't like to think myself in terms of a gay world and a straight world. I feel that there's only one world, and that's the world of loving relationships, of sexual relationships, of all different sorts of, of, of experiences that happen between people. And uh, as a matter of fact, I don't even like, personally, the label homosexual. I think that, that uh, it's just that, a label, and that the label heterosexual is also a label. This is the, the uh, majority uh, preference uh, presently. But I think that people should not relate to each other as men and women or as homosexuals and as heterosexuals, but as people and give up all this role-playing, this business oh, wait, of... Wait, 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 that negates the whole basis of our biological beings. People have sexual desires for one another. Now, in the case of homosexuals, it may be for another man. In the case of heterosexuals, for another woman. But what do you mean people should love people? But you don't... Well, I think, first of all, that, 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 the, that a great deal of... Uh, Alfred Kinsey says that, that sex is learned. Your sexual preferences are learned preferences. And you know that from the very beginning of, of uh, your experience sexually that there's a certain amount of propaganda that comes through to you through literature, through movies, through all sorts of things which tell you how to behave sexually. I believe that, that, uh, that this is the case with respect to homosexuals and to heterosexuals, that, uh, or whether you're gay or straight, those are the words that are, are used in com common parlance. Uh, that, that these learned experiences are, uh, if, 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 if you really get down to the basic, uh, basic sexual experience, you find that touch and feeling and uh, experiences of this sort are really much more uh, uh, important. And that... Uh, are you saying to me you expect the world ultimately to be neither homosexual nor heterosexual, but just plain sexual? It'll never be, but I'd like to see it. 
I, I, mean, I you know, think that in many that ways we're moving. Is that part of what gay all about? No, you know, you know the thing that's so amusing when you hear these discussions, and it's probably because you don't have that wide an experience with homosexual groupings, but I know Peter and I have lived together for six years, and we've known various other straight couples who have become friendly. And when you really begin comparing notes over what you have fights over, uh, uh, you'd be um, even, even down to even sexual attitudes and everything, the similarity between uh, homosexual couples and heterosexual couples is enormously greater than most people would ever realize. It is not as different from the standard norms and procedures of living together, you know. I mean, you have musical, you know, one likes opera, the other likes uh, a different type of music. And, and you find that you fight over the same things, money. One's a spendthrift, the other is, is it doesn't want to, you know, they, you know, all these arguments you settle in any marriage, straight or gay. And we really find that, that when it came to dealing with other couples, that we, you know, our relationship was not that much different from theirs. You, though, are talking about something very different from what he's leading up to. And I think what he's leading up to is what disturbs me a little bit. And that is, within the gay liberation movement, I sense a desire to proselytize that, that gay is good. Now, no one is saying necessarily, or I hope no one is saying that gay is bad. But to say gay is good is a totally different thing. And the marches that you've had, the very magazine that you have, as a matter of fact, seems to me to glorify the homosexual world. And I'm wondering whether or not the homosexual world should be glorified. You don't find heterosexuals running around all the time saying, whoopee, look at me, I'm heterosexual. Play oh, Playboy magazine. Play 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 magazine does nothing. Yes. Right? The heterosexual world is constantly glorified. Right. You know? Chest beating all the time. Homosexuals right. have a little bit of uh, making up to do on that score. Right. I'm not sure I follow you on any of that. You all jumped on me, but I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> the fact of the matter is well, that you said that nobody's running around saying that gay is bad. But I nobody's, think had, nobody's had running around. We're not uh, saying that gay is better. It's all about they, heterosexual they, they're not men saying in the straitjacket they're in. A lot heterosexual of, men in the straitjacket yes. they're in? What kind of straitjacket are we in? Uh, heterosexual men. Do you ever see them wearing groovy clothes? Yeah, I see yes. them wearing groovy you clothes. Now. Well, you see it a little, you see it a little bit more now. But As a matter for, of fact, for many centuries, here, here particularly in this country, heterosexual men have been afraid to wear, have been afraid to think in terms of poetry, they have been cry. afraid to express themselves, have been afraid to cry, have been afraid to do all sorts are of things. Are you now implying that all know. poets were homosexual? Do you know? No. Or, or, or well, all but movie many, artists many were very, homosexual? Many very fine artists have been homosexual. Ah, that's weight. a different yeah. thing. You said right. that straight people were afraid to express themselves, and I wondered right. if therefore every creative artist was homosexual. No, I'm not you, saying that at all. What I am saying is this, that, that, that there are many creative people who are homosexuals by reason of default, and that is that the, the heterosexual majority has failed, and the, the males have failed to fill these areas that, uh, that are creative and sensitive. And uh, I think that that's a crying shame. I'd like to see heterosexually inclined men really active uh, in, in the arts, for example, more so than, than they are. I don't agree with that. I, I think that the uh, uh, homosexual has such an advantage. Like, uh, you're a single male, if you want to try being a starving artist or a writer or a poet or a musician or any of these other things, you can do it. And you can still have a homosexual relationship. You won't have children. You won't have to, you know, the increasing economic burden. So therefore, you're freer to pursue the arts. Also, the social environment of the arts is more liberal towards homosexuals, and homosexuals are accepted more there because it tends to attract more intellectual people. And I also think, Jack, uh, I disagree with you very much because uh, there used to be a saying among homosexuals years and years ago about uh, reading beads. Uh, there was a great deal of sort of camp humor dealing with beads, and yet it was the heterosexuals, the straight hippies, that were the first ones to run around with beads around their neck. Which I, you know, and I think the heterosexual males, in a way, were, were better than the homosexual males, and even now are freer. Some of the straight males are running around with earrings in their ears, single earrings, and most homosexuals wouldn't do that because it smacks of effeminacy. And homosexuals are very concerned with maintaining their masculinity because, after all, masculinity is what makes you attractive to other homosexuals, usually. And so I think that we have, uh, that it isn't as clear I disagree as, beca as you outlined it. A lot of disagreeing people. Yeah, <laughs> I disagree a lot. Uh, first off, you asked something about... Uh, uh, we got on onto about 14 tangents uh, as to what it, where gay liberation is at, and he sort of brought it around full circle with this bit about um, uh, um, homosexual. I hate blanket statements, but homosexuals, he says, are uh, like very concerned with their masculinity. Well, I that's the, that's the thing, that's the whole thing about gay lib. 
it's not concerned with it. Gay lib embraces everybody. They want, they're in favor of, if, if, you, if anybody wants to run around in drag, if they want to run around in a leather, leather drag or, or doctor drag or any drag, we any costume. Should we encourage you know? people to run around in drag? Why not? They'd Why be not? a lot less frustrated. Frankly, I think if you encouraged it, uh, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you really uh, got off the roll bit of what a man is supposed to do or what a man is supposed to be or how a man is supposed to act, as opposed to a, how, what a woman is supposed to do, act, or be, then uh, I think you'd get aw away, really, from uh, drag queens and they, because you wouldn't have the thing. A, it wouldn't be a problem. But B, they wouldn't be, I, I don't think it would occur that much. The, because you, you, you don't have, I think that drag queens, uh, there's a certain thing about it that where people think, I love a man, therefore there must be something in me that makes me a woman. And so they Or it's only morally it. right. It's only morally, morally right. right. I am attracted to men. Only women are supposed to be attracted to, to men. It's only right for women to be attracted to men, and therefore, somehow to justify myself morally, I have to assume the roles, or this is the way a drag queen thinks. And I think it should be discouraged, because I think that drag, whether it be the transvestite running around in a dress, pretending to be in a pseudo-female, or even the overly done uh, male homosexual in riding a motorcycle in all black leather, I think that's also drag. I think that both should be discouraged. I don't I, think they should wait, be wait, discouraged wait, 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 at wait, all. Gentlemen, we, we do I come think we should be relaxed we, about That's the point. We do come full circle, and that's exactly the point I want to get to, and that's what I was getting at right at the beginning. I have a vague feeling that every young boy being born today, you would love to see of at least neuter gender. That is, he could swing back and forth with perfect ease. And I have a feeling that's part of where gay lib would like us to go. And I just I want to know whether or not I'm accurate I have when a I say feeling that. that possible, possibly women's lib might, might be along the same lines. Because I think the, the You're begging my question. You're begging my question. No, I'm not. Gay I'm lib going, feel I'm going along. I don't know. Yeah. I really Do you don't. Feel no, I don't. You don't want to hear a very funny story. I don't story. care. Really. <laughs> there, there were four people. I think people. it'd be great to swing both there, ways. So do I. There, there were four it people in the bar. There was a straight guy, a straight girl, a lesbian, and a male homosexual. And the straight guy looks at the lesbian and says, my, what a waste, such a beautiful girl and lesbian. The lesbian looks at the straight girl and looks at her and says, oh, what a waste, such a beautiful girl. <laughs> the gay guy looks at the straight guy and says, oh, what a waste, such a good looking guy. And it, this is really where we are in this world. In, in, this is very really the psychology that we function on in this society. Everyone really is sort of looking at everyone else and saying, you know, what a waste. Well, now here, here, Randy, is what I'm talking about. I'm sure there are girls sitting in the audience looking at us and saying, here I am, you know, 24, getting older and not being able to find a husband. And what are they doing sitting there? <laughs> well, Randy, this is what I'm talking about when I, when I say that it would be nice t to do away with these rigid categorizations that people put each other into. Because in, in this way... In the history of the world, has there ever been a doing away with... A only there, where you have the law of Moses and the strict laws of Leviticus and so forth, have these things come down to us through Calvinist morality. And here, uh, it's, it's uh, been part of our American sexual heritage as well. And... Uh, there have been societies in, in which people did swing both ways. The Greeks, uh, for example, were, were very big on this. You can read the well, Satyricon. The, the Greeks are the uh, classic example of that, but I'm not so sure it was as widespread in early Greece as, as people would like you to believe that they wasn't. were trying to use that as an example. It was I not. think it was only about 10%, only the upper classes, and one of the greatest insults in ancient Greece was to infer that a man couldn't make it with a woman, make it with a woman. And, uh, you know, it was really a, a predominantly heterosexual society in which homosexuality was just sort of institutionalized as a substrata. Which man side are you to... on, anyhow? Uh-huh. I'm, I'm on the, always <laughs> on the side <laughs> of truth. <laughs> we've got to take a break again. I want to get, we've got some members of the audience here this morning, and I want to get to them. We're going to take a break, and we'll be back. I'm holding in my hand, incidentally, a couple of issues of Gay Magazine with headlines like New Gay Riots Erupt in Greenwich Village, Demonstration Ends in Violent Melee, NYU Breaks Gay Dance Contract, Police Damage Totals 1,000 in Bar Rate. And then inside these magazines, there's some pictures I can't show you on the air. And I want to ask them a little bit about those pictures, but I've got a couple up here. Are the two of you married? <laughs> no. no. You don't know each other? No. no. All right, what are you, what's on your mind? Um, I would just like to ask a question about homosexual relationships. 
It seems axiomatic in heterosexual relationships, at least at the present time, that one individual, usually the male, subjugates the other individual. That is, he's the one with the power in the situation. I was wondering, in homosexual relationships, if this kind of thing also occurs, since you mentioned that, they were, that the similarities between hetero and homosexual relationships were very great. They, they occur in the same way, because frequently it's the so-called subjugated one who maybe passes sexually, but who is really the dominator of the relationship, who really pulls the strings at the uh, one who supposedly plays a more dominant role. Also, there is a degree of role switching, uh, but no. it doesn't always follow that the one who's sexually submissive in bed is the one that's socially submissive outside of bed. Well, is one always sexually submissive? No. Uh, no, as, as a matter of fact, uh, God, you have... What a <laughs> <laughs> oh. As a matter of fact, I think that's one of the things that gay, uh, gay liberation is all about, and that is the breaking down that's of this kind of role-playing. And I think that this is one area in which homosexuals can lead, lead uh, in many ways in, in the breaking down of a strict male, female, dominant, passive uh, pattern. I like to think of homosexual relationships between men, two men, or between two women as equalitarian relationships. Both partners go out and work. Both partners uh, uh, actually are equals, and I think this is as it should be. I would like to see more of this in the homosexual world. I think too many homosexuals have aped heterosexual patterns for too long. Well, well I'm, women's I'm lib, to women's lib is, well, is doing the same thing because uh, they're trying to uh, stop this uh, idea that uh, that sex is something that men do to women, mm -hmm. or uh, or that women well, have done to them. Well, one more thing on on the thing of. No one is always submissive, or very few are. But I think in most relationships, you do find that there are preferences of sexual roles in which one does generally tend to, to prefer one role where the other pr partner tends to prefer the complementary role. I, I want to know why you'd ask the question, and that obviously within the heterosexual relationship, there are some situations where a male is dominant or a female is dominant. Why decide it would be any different, or think it would be any different in a homosexual relationship? Um, I didn't know. That's why I asked the question. But. Um I regard that kind of relationship or that quality in a relationship as negative, and I was hoping for the answer that I got, that it's somewhat removed in a homosexual relationship. Are you a woman's lib member? Yes, I am. So therefore, he put you right on the spot, and he was right. You hit it right on the head, didn't you? What's on your mind, sir? Well, uh, you asked the question if there was any societies that had been totally homosexual. Uh, a few years ago, there was a motion picture called Mondo Kani, in which they uh, depicted a South Seas Island society which was totally free in their sexual ideas and the men all dressed as women and the women all dressed as men or the men dressed as men or the women as women whatever pleased them mm -hmm. do you accept well, that as I, 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 John Capetti as that? a filmmaker is kind of a he switches on and off to being rather charlatan-esque and, and that is not really freedom see in a lot of these cultures these this type of behavior is institutionalized in other words it's perfectly all right for a man to assume the even the dre the barachis and the american indians he lived as a male female um, but these people were restricted either they were considered as women or they were made witch doctors or they were made uh, uh, you know they played specialized defined roles and they were accepted but they were accepted in those roles it wasn't where everyone was swinging around if that was the impression the movie gave it was an erroneous impression boys okay. in the band how accurate is that a I hated it. horrible <laughs> I've never seen it I won't go see it <laughs> I'm, see it's horrible. I'm gonna wait and yet. see it for nothing on a late night TV. I refuse well, to subsidize late night TV, I've, been, I've been brainwashed. Well, I, all I, I can say is anyone who has friends like that, they deserve them. In our, in our newspaper, we had uh, a review of The it. Boys in the Band that was written by Peter, and it was called The Boars in the Band. <laughs> and actually, I think that, that the trouble with that particular movie was that it took a great number of homosexual stereotypes and put them all into one party, a great number of disturbed people in various ways. But I, I can never imagine sitting through, myself, sitting through a party such as the one that took place uh, in that movie. It would, it was, I would have walked out I think the kindest thing, The kindest thing I can say about it, really, that it was, was that it's really a very dated thing. It's got a lot of zippy uh, dialogue. The dialogue is, you know, very great. It's great bitch. 
uh, like uh, Virginia Woolf or uh, Lion in Winter. You've got a lot of good screenplays and you know sharp dialogue. But this, but the situation is very, uh, it's, it's very old. It's old hat. It's, it's old written fashion. for heterosexuals. Yeah. yeah, it really is because it shows homosexuals as miserable, bitchy, self defeating, cutting, ugly people. And this is what heterosexuals really, as some of them, want to believe about homosexuals, because it why makes then, them Why then can't threatening. we get an honest play about homosexuality, since, as I understand it, within the theater, a great many of the outstanding playwrights are homosexuals. So why can't we get an honest play, then, about homosexuality? We have some honest plays. There was one, Puppy Dog Tales, that played off-Broadway, was successful. It was about a happily married couple. and. Uh, a uh, friend that lived downstairs and an old college friend who came to visit, and it was attacked in the New York Times, as a matter of fact, saying that the premises of the play was based on the concept of homosexual bliss, which that reviewer found difficult to accept, and some of the scenes of embracing and kissing made him feel uncomfortable. So we're only a small percentage of the public. We're not a large enough market to foist our taste on any real large segment of the mass media. Is it not a fact that there's been concern within the theater world that with some of the outstanding playwrights being homosexuals, that indeed they continuously downgrade the woman in their plays? No, no. I disagree. The first, Absolutely. The I think first, the finest female characters in American, 20th century American drama uh, are written by or created by uh, by homosexual players. Anybody out there? Do I have anybody out there who feels negative toward homosexuals, or scared by homosexuals, or threatened? Anybody who believes the laws? Anybody who believes the laws are not restrictive enough against homosexuals? Anybody prepared to see all the laws come down about homosexuality and everybody should do their own thing, ma'am? What? Everybody's shaking your head. What? How about you? You want to come up for a moment? Huh? How about you? You want to come up? Come on, you have to go over to the microphone. You can't ask me from where you are. When you said something about a heterosexual relationship, somebody, I think you said something about Playboy magazine. Didn't you all say something about Playboy? Yeah, well, right. Yeah, that is something that glorifies, glorifies uh, a, a, a heterosexual he says that why do we game. Need, why do we need a, uh, a paper or an organ or a print press in general mm -hmm. to, that would glorify gay? Nobody's saying that gay is bad. The fact of the matter is a lot of people are thinking that gay is bad. And we may be sitting, sitting in a rather rarefied chamber here, uh, but, uh, the, but middle America, as a, as a rule, uh, I find uh, is rather hostile to the idea. And, I mean, they find it either religiously repugnant or, or just unesthetic. Well, do you think that is Playboy magazine popular among a homosexual crowd? Do they read Playboy magazine? I think magazine? that Playboy think magazine so. in many ways is a, uh, uh, a, a very detrimental thing for uh, straight or heterosexual uh, people. I think that it it glorifies certain values, which I don't find particularly... Uh, then why duplicate uh, it in a gay magazine? I don't think we've duplicated that in, in gay. Uh, I think uh, there's a little bit of a difference in gay. Uh, gay, uh, as I look through it, strikes me very much as sort of a National Enquirer type of, of newspaper. Sensationalistic, uh, showing the kind of black and white prints of, of nude males that you might find of nude females in National Enquirer magazine. Why duplicate the worst in journalism? Why not aim for the best in journalism? Well, I don't think that we've uh, uh, put a lot of nudes into gay. We've put them. I wish I could show them. I don't think there are nudes. There's there's very nudes. Nudes. There's nudes. There's there's nudes. Nudes. There's should not, not be offensive. I don't believe and there's, there's there is nothing wrong with a, with a nude really? anyway. With I think well, I will all wear in bathing suits. No, you didn't answer my question about is Playboy popular among homosexual oh, groups. Uh, do they read it? Do you read it? Some I don't, think so. I, I don't read it. I think Playboy is The thing that I find strange is that the there's so many good, letters usually. from homosexuals telling about their terrible experiences and things like that in Playboy magazine. And it seems sort of a contradiction if, you know, you assume that they read the magazine because they're always play, praising Hugh Hefner's philosophy and telling him about their terrible experiences and everything. And it seems sort of a contradiction that they'd be reading the magazine and reading his philosophy when basically it's supposed to appeal to, you know, the man or whatever. Well, women, a lot of women lot read of Playboy women. to find out what men are saying. And also, you forget, we live in a society, when you go to college, you're on a dorm floor and probably uh, two-thirds of the guys there are getting Playboy magazine, reading it and talking about it, you know? So it's natural, it's lying around, you know, mm -hmm. that you're going, it's so... Omnipresent, you can't avoid it. I, I think, I I'd like to I think that, that it's very think it's unfortunate that straight men should have a model like Playboy with the flashy cars and the uh, 
the, the drink and whatever it else it is that's adverti ad advertised <laughs> in Playboy. And this is supposed to represent what the, what the average man on the prowl is supposed to be. And, and I think it's an unfortunate thing. It must make many, many guys feel very uh, 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 incapable because they see these pictures of men who are obviously so successful that have big beach houses and boats and everything that they can run around with with their so-called chick. I want to ask if I can. Uh, I want to ask the lady one thing. You said you were not in favor of restricting any more laws as far as homosexuality is concerned. Wait, restricting laws? You wouldn't want any more restrictive laws? No. I All right. Would well, you want a freedom of laws? Yes. All right. Are you married? Yes. Do you have a child? Yes. Do you have a son? Yes. Are you willing to have him become a homosexual? What do you say? Um, Are you I willing to have him I grow up to be a homosexual? I think it's not something you can have any say in. Are he you willing to have him, would you be just as happy if he grows up a homosexual as a, as a heterosexual? If he's happy, she should uh, That's no, not the question. No, the ladies will answer. answer that. Um, I feel that, th from what I don't, I'm not a homosexual, so I don't know how they, f their feelings, but the, the way I understand it is that they can't change the way they feel. So why complicate your life by having everybody worry about it? No, I think I could accept it. Where, do you have a husband here? No, I your don't. Husband, your husband's not here with you. I wonder if your husband would feel the same way. Let me take yeah, a break. No, he well, wouldn't feel the same way. Why would he not feel the same way? Because he feels that, you know, certain things are sissified, and this is sort of a contention in our family that I feel that, you know, to paint and to draw and to write and to sing and things like this aren't sissified. And if you happen to have some... I think you had Christine Jorgensen on the show once that described it perfectly. She said there are, there are two points. There you have masculine over here and feminine over here and that nobody is totally masculine and totally feminine, and that people vary along this line, and that she happened to be down here somewhere. The reason I ask you a question is there's a vast difference between saying you don't want to persecute homosexuals and saying at the same time you don't care if the entire nation grows up to be homosexual. I didn't say that. No, I, I know you didn't say that, but I think that many of them are saying that. No. And that's really, I think, the only point it's of dispute here. I, I certainly don't think that you ought to be persecuted. I don't think there ought to be laws that make your life difficult. But at the it's... same time, I'm not prepared to say if a young guy wants to grow up, if he can grow, if we can, if we can program children to grow up to be either homosexual or heterosexual, let's just as well have them grow up to be homosexual as heterosexual. I'm not sure I'm no, willing to go along them, with that. I don't go along with that. I think that would be, that would be terribly dull. Yeah, you can't program them you anyway. So She's right. Variety, variety is the spice and of most, life. Most variety is the spice of life. We'll take a break and we'll be right back. We've got more to come. <laughs> you were just looking at there was sitting in the audience with his wife. May I say your pregnant wife, sir? Is that yes. all right? And, and I dragged him up, if not bodily, then at least I asked him if he'd come up, because I wonder how you would react to the idea of having a son become a homosexual, or be a homosexual. Truthfully, right at the moment, uh, I'm not sure how I would react to the situation. I am of the era that was raised of the opinion that you look down uh, at a homosexual. I, I've learned a lot here this morning. Uh, actually, I wasn't prepared to come for this. I, my wife told me it was uh, the woman's liberation we were coming to. <laughs> <laughs> so I, she fooled you, didn't she? <laughs> she certainly did. But uh, I think I have got a little better understanding now of some of the problems that um, they are faced with, but getting back to your I, original I, question, yeah. I, I, I really am not prepared to say whether I could totally accept it at this point. Um, if it were to have, if I were to have a child that would show homosexual tendencies tomorrow, I, I don't think I could uh, cope with that situation. Now, and I don't mean to put you on the spot in asking this question. Could you feel comfortable sitting down in a living room with these gentlemen, just having a conversation now, having watched part of this program? Um, <laughs> I hate to say so. There were two. Of, there are two of them. I think that I could, I could talk very easily with. Is that because two of them are more masculine than the other two of them? That, that may be. But I found two of them uh, a little more acceptable to me. Not a little more. I find them. Is there Very within exactly. the homosexual world, indeed, various strata of acceptabilities in homosexuality? Absolutely. Absolutely. What are yeah. they? Um, 
I don't know uh, what is acceptable as, uh, in terms of, uh, let's put it this way. There are a lot of uh, people who get very uptight when you, you know, when you say, when you walk into a party, say, with someone on your arm who they don't like, or who, they, who looks like they might not like, like a drag queen. Uh, the, the, the other guests might get very uptight. Uh, I was at a gathering about, uh, we were at a gathering uh, about three weeks ago, and uh, everyone, everyone there just thought that most of the people from uh, uh, Gay Liberation, uh, the organizations themselves, were absolutely out of their minds. Now, that's not sexuality, that's politics. But, uh, but they're, 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 it's, it's imp you can't just say, you know, that homosexuals like to do this or look have as a unit on any one thing. Uh, I'm not sure I really got the answer I was looking for. There was a time, I understand, among black people before, before black is beautiful became a concept to black mm -hmm. people. There was a time when if you were a black person and you had a light skin and you oh, had oh. whiter features, you therefore were more acceptable. You were considered a more desirable mm -hmm. black person, even within the black community. Now, what I'm really asking you is, Within the homosexual community, is there an image that the manly homosexual is at the top of the heap? He's the guy who can fit easily into both worlds, and therefore, he is king homosexual. Yeah, I would say so. Mm. He's, he's the most attractive. I don't like that at all. I mean, because oh. most homosexuals are, are looking for a man, and they're looking for what society has defined for them for a man. So here comes, a, a, like a, you know, and this is why you have with the ultra-masculinity cultists. They go in for Western gear and leather jackets and motorcycles, some of them, because this, to them, is the ultimate in maleness. And oh, they but find I think that, that, I think sexually find that a lot attractive. of homosexuals look down on leather queens. Yes, they do. <laughs> but still, most really homosexuals good. would go for a well, a well-developed masculine person over uh, someone who tended to be a bit dainty. Now, if therefore, if you're going to start out with the masculine homosexual as number one, and each effeminate, each level of effeminate quality becomes lower down the list, is the drag queen then at the very bottom? Yes. More or less, yeah. And not only the bottom, but uh, the drag queen is something we've been stuck with, frankly, because the drag queen makes uh. up about 1% of the homosexual population. I mean, there are thousands and thousands of homosexuals and you'll, you'll have a whole room full of people, and one drag queen will come in, and because that person dresses eccentrically and, and looks bizarre, that's the one that will get all the attention. And this is from the media. This is, and also, it's the only homosexual straight people ever see. I mean, we were walking around downtown Baltimore all day, and I don't know how many people looked at us and said, there go those four homosexuals, but I'm sure that there are a couple of transvestites running around downtown Baltimore, and people say, oh, look, there goes a homosexual, and that to them is a homosexual. And I personally, I'm one of those homosexuals who, who is really somewhat repelled by that. Uh, I'm repelled by, by drag Curiously, queens. As I, I don't understand like it, them. Transvestites don't necessarily have to be homosexuals. No, There's that's no true. Equation. That's true. Right. But they're different. Aren't. They're different yeah. types. I've met married men who were transvestites, and when they get in drag, they look like any middle-aged woman in my mother's bridge club. Uh, as a matter of fact, I went out with a that's psychiatrist. A, a, a married <laughs> I took a married psychiatrist to a homosexual restaurant, and he looked like one of my mother's bridge sisters with a little pill hat and a very conservative <laughs> outfit. Because, see, he believed that he had a second personality that was female that came out and controlled his body. But a drag queen always looks ostentatious. A homosexual drag queen would put on, like, much mascara, something that looked garish out of a 1940s movie, like the, you know, would not look like a conventional, ordinary woman to pass in the crowd. See, the drag queen wants attention, where the transvestite wants to be accepted generally as a woman, but, a straight but transvestite. All, all, all of these, these differences, you say, as, as, as Randy said, the, the drags or the transvestites make up, up only a very small percentage of the, uh, the homosexual community, and they are the ones that stand out like sore th thumbs to the, to the vast majority. But uh, all of these things are, are, are tied up somehow with this whole idea of role playing, of having. And 25 programs on the drug crisis. Mm -hmm. Fine, I, I mean, can. 
but they're still, they're really, they tend to be more disturbed homosexuals, drag queens, because anyone running around like that can't hold a responsible job. You just said they're, they tend to be more disturbed They tend to be the most disturbed Therefore, segment. Therefore, are homosexuals home. disturbed? Is that I, your implying? I, no. I mean, I think that you probably find a greater, if the straight public is 10 or 15 percent neurotic, maybe the homosexual public is, is, is you know, 20 or 30 percent neurotic. But the drag Have queen... Have you gone to a psychiatrist? Uh... I never saw out a psychiatrist. When my father found out I was homosexual and I wanted to go back to school where I was involved with a boy, he said, you have to go to a psychiatrist and get a letter saying that you're all right to go back to school because I don't want to send you back into those circumstances. So I had to see a psychiatrist for six times. And he said, uh, you don't need psychotherapy. Uh, you could benefit from it because everyone could benefit from psychotherapy, but it wouldn't, you know, it's certainly I'll write a letter to your father telling him that, you know, you're well adjusted and you should go back to school, and he did. And I Have went you back been to with school. Psychiatry? Yeah, I saw a psychiatrist uh, for about nine months. For homosexuality? Uh, yeah, that was uh, in 1960, 60, no, 62. Have before you? I came to New York. No, but I'd love to, just for fun. <laughs> 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 I've always wanted to. It's a free country. You can go to a Actually, we, there's, a, there's a very famous anti-homosexual psychiatrist. His name is Dr. Sakharides, and we thought once on the newspaper of sending a... Uh, a spy uh, in to, to <laughs> talk to him. I know a psychiatrist fact. and that just, took just see the sort of stuff. Transvestite psychiatrist. Yeah. And he's going to tell us we're sick. A lot of psychiatrists. I want to take a break right on that note. We'll be right back. We've got more to come. Where is the gay liberation movement heading and where is our society heading in terms of either acceptance or as we perhaps become a more conservative society, rejection of homosexuals? Well, I remember Edward Carpenter said that a kind of love that is despised and tabooed and talked about in holes and corners and in bathrooms and, and uh, spat upon, that this kind of love, he said, is, can hardly be expected to show its best side to the world. But I'm very happy and I'm very proud to see homosexuals starting to stand up 